Hi everyone, good evening and welcome once again to our Thursday edition of Red Talks. Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao and all over the globe, we would like to welcome you all to our Thursday edition of Red Talks and we are still here for the November series, present series tonight. It's going to be our episode three and you guys my challenge question for tonight is how did the last two episodes of our present series change our attitude towards our daily routine, our daily itineraries, or even how we engage or interact with the rest of our loved ones to make sure that we are present in the presence of God in their presence. So tonight, we'd like to welcome you all for episode 3. Our title is Rooted and Grounded. So call all your friends, text, chat, or even share the link of our live Bible study and let them engage and interact vertically to our Lord Jesus Christ. May I call on our speaker once again for tonight, Josh Chua. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time in joining us. And I hope that you're all excited though for tonight's episode, which as Sister Marie mentioned, is rooted and grounded. And I, I, I really pray and I hope no, and, uh, the last two episodes so far has been helping you, impacting your lives, and na nyo po. And that's really the most important thing, diba? Kasi as we always say, it's all about the application. Walang, walang, walang lakas ang salita ng Panginoon sa buhay natin hanggat gagamitin natin. So I am excited and grateful for always the privilege and honor na makapagsama-sama tayo to discuss the Word of God. So please call your family, your loved ones, your friends because we're going to be starting very soon. Sister Marie? Yes, Josh. Josh, from last... Tuesday, I cannot get over you from glory to glory, you know. And we praise God because we are a better Christian today than yesterday. And yung present po na series is something that is light. Yung repentance na discuss mo na change of mind lang pala yun. Kasi pag churchy daw masyado, pag repentance, para bang kailangan eh, hinahagupit ang likod mo para maka-repent ka. But praise God for all the revelation of his messages in the present series. May I pray for everyone before you start the uh, message, Josh. Father, we thank you with so much joy in our hearts and excitement. We welcome the Holy Spirit in the all corners of our homes, wherever we are, Father God. So thank you, Lord, for the privilege of choosing us here to speak to you, to engage with you, to interact with you, and to know you even more, Father God. Lord, day by day, we feel your presence in our lives, in our homes, in the members of our families, and through this simple, humble Bible study called Red Talks. We are so thankful that we get to experience you. This is a memory of our lifetime. So thank you, Lord, for honoring us with your presence tonight, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. So thank you very much, Sister Marie, for that prayer. So welcome again, everyone, joining us tonight for our episode on Rooted and Grounded. So I hope, Nona, uh, with all the new episodes and the past episodes episodes that we've been going through, I, I hope and I pray na may mga bago po tayo na tututunan and uh, that grabe... Iba pala yung perspective dapat on being present. And that's actually how important being present is. So siguro naman by now, na-establish na po natin yung importance of being present, of not being caught up in the past, and making sure now that we make the most of our time. So today we'll, we'll be talking about rooted and grounded. So our verse for tonight, which is where we'll be really uh, building up from, is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 34. Ulitin ka po, that's Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 34. So as you're turning your Bibles there, 
and I hope that you are no. I hope you have your Bibles and your notebooks ready with you so that we can take note of everything that God is going to be teaching us and revealing to us today. Um, para po hindi po natin makalimutan. So Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 34. Sabi po dito, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will devote he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, can you comment that down below? Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or what or about your body, what you will wear. <coughs> Sorry. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And, wh and why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If the, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which are here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Can you comment that down below? Much more, much more. Verse 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and yet your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So very practical. And I think naman very easy to understand na yung verse natin tonight. But we're gonna dive deeper into this to really see paano po natin to maa-applyan. So typically, when we talk about these verses, we start with yung verse 25 na yung, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Ganang ganan. But really, the question is, actually, yung, yung practice or yung technique natin na when we read the Bible, whenever we see the word therefore, we look at what was there before. Ano yung, ano yung verses before that? Kaya yung paggamit po ng therefore, pinapakita po sa atin na connected po siya dahil sa nakaraan na sinabi ng Panginoon, kaya po ito na sinasabi ngayon. That's why we started with verse 19, talking about treasures on earth and on heaven. So that's what we're going to be talking about first. Treasures on earth and on heaven. Can you comment that down below? Treasures on earth and on heaven. And what does this have to do with us being present, being rooted, being grounded? Ano pong kinalaman ng mga treasures na hinahabol natin? So, that's really the question, no? I mean, it's talking about, it was comparing the treasures that we find on he in heaven and the treasures we find on earth. And Jesus here, because what we're reading is really actually a sermon from Jesus. So, we're studying His Word, yung literal na sinabi niya, and we're understanding Ano ba yung gusto niyang nating habulin? Ano ba yung gusto niya natin gawin? What's so bad about chasing treasures here on earth? And we can see naman, siguro nabasa po, naman po natin, na sinasabi niya na mas mabuti yung habulin natin yung mga treasures na nasa heaven, hindi po yung nasa earth. Bakit? Ano ba yung difference? Sabi niya, the treasure here on earth will be destroyed by moth, by rust, it will also be stolen by thieves. Whereas yung mga treasure po na kapag kinabal natin sa heaven, iba po yan, hindi po yan masisira, mawawala, mauubusan, mananakaw, or mananakawan. 
that's why it's a better thing to chase. And if you remember, no, yung pinag-usapan natin last Tuesday about yung Haggai chapter 1 verses 5 to 6. We won't go there na. But we were talking about, di ba, yung minsan feeling natin na grabe, kayad po tayo ng kayad, pero parang laging kulang po yung sahod natin. The, no matter what we do, the resources, the time, the money, the effort we expend and extend, it seems to be never enough. Kaya po parang nakaka, nakakalungkot po at nakakatakot kasi parang feeling natin hopeless. Na talaga, pa, kung ganito ako kahirap ngayon, paano pa five years from now, pag may pamilya na, pag kasal na, pag may anak na, eh syempre, by that time, mas marami na po yung mga kailangan bayaran, mas ma- mahal na po yung mga gastusin, paano na? Di ba po? And um, actually, statistically, nowadays, we are seeing less and less people getting married or even less and less people having kids. And sociologists and researchers say no that that's because people are now being more and more afraid of the future na ano na if i have kids kawawa naman sila paano naman yung kinabukasan nila na ang gulo-gulo ng mundo ngayon paano na sa panahon nila and so they're saying na baka mas mabuti wag na lang tayo magkaanak kasi kawawa din sila eh. and that's and that was the mentality and that is currently the mentality that is plaguing people today even even people i know yung mga kaibigan ko who are starting their families or who are dating or whatever and they would have that discussion with me na they'd say Josh ano yung ano yung perspective mo na hindi, hindi ka ba natatakot and sabi ko well if you look at times right now if you look at the trends of the world yes it's scary because there are wars and rumors of wars there are plagues and pestilence there are pandemics happening sounds familiar no the bible talks about these things there are all these things happening prices are rising of of yung bigas yung gasolina lahat it's scary but thankfully we know that there's more Thankfully, we know that Jesus is talking about something else other than the treasures here on earth. So, siguro, it's a good time for us to pause and ask ourselves, what treasures am I chasing? Yung totoong usapan, no? Na wag, wag, wag po natin bulahan yung sarili natin. Ano yung talagang hinahanap natin? Ano yung talagang... Bakit... Ano yung totoong dahilan kung bakit tayo kumakayod? Why are we working so hard? Why are we going through the grind? Why are we putting all this effort? What is the purpose of it all? Di ba po? What are we driven now by? Why are we driven? Are we driven by our treasures? Are we driven by money? Are we driven by all these things? Na? And it's not just about money. And it's not also about your social standing. Kasi baka yung iba sa atin, inisip natin na, oh, Siyempre, mabilis usapan kung may pera, kung mayaman, hindi na nila kailangan kumayod, hindi na nila kailangan magtrabaho. But that's not what I'm talking about. Because no matter where we are coming from, no matter who you are, no matter how much you're earning, hindi po, kung, kung ganak kalaki man yung ITR natin at the end of the year, it doesn't matter. Because we're all striving and we're all we're all working so hard for something The question is, what is it? It's not about our standing. It's not about our salary. But really, what's, what is the Bible? What is Jesus pointing us to today? No? And siguro inisip natin ngayon na grabe, simula pa lang, parang nakakapagod na, nakakalungkot na, nakakalula na, na yung mga kailangan natin gawin. It, it's tempting to be hopeless. But in the same way with our discussion last Tuesday, no? We focused on the past before, and today we're going to be focusing on the future and what our position and our posture should be about the future. No? Um, the Bible continues to talk about eyes. Yung mga mata po natin, yung mga ano yung ginagamit natin para makita. No? It talks about having good eyes and bad eyes. Can you comment that down below? Good eyes. Good eyes. Yan po yung gusto natin, yung mga mata po na mabuti para sa atin. So the question is, where are we looking at? No? Or rather, I think the better question is, who are you looking at? Minsan po yung kasi, in light of all these things that are happening around us, we're looking at the treasures we have, yung bank account po natin, ilang, ilang zero na, 
<laughs> yung, yung banko po natin, ano yung interest rate, yung mga ganun po. Or even we're looking at yung job titles po natin na dati, analyst lang ako. Gusto ko ngayon maging manager, maging director, maging CEO, COO. You know, and these are, I'm not saying these are bad things. But what I'm saying is that, is that our source of security? Is that our source of purpose? Is that why we're doing what we're doing every day? Is that what gives our body light? Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? The verse that says in verse 22 to 23, sabi dito, the eye is a lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. And we like that. Light, alam naman natin laging, kapag may ilaw, kapag may ilaw, mabuti. Kasi nakakita po tayo, kasi may direction po tayo, hindi po tayo naliligaw. No? Uh, verse 23, but if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? The interesting thing is, kasi diba medyo pag binasa po natin, parang iba, iba yung pag-iisip ni Jesus. Ha? Parang tumatalon siya sa mga topics. Una, pinag-usapan niya yung treasure. Ngayon, yung mata. Yung susunod naman. Mata tsaka ilaw. Yung susunod naman. Tumalon siya sa masters. Ano ba? Ano ba connection nitong lahat? You see, the treasure that we seek, it says in verse 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The reason why it's so important that Jesus talks about yung treasure na hinahabol natin. Kasi sabi niya po, naka-attach naka po dyan yung, yung puso natin. Yung purpose, yung, yung, yung lahat ng pagkatao natin. And so it's, it's a good practice actually no, na hindi ko alam sino sa inyo na nagbabudget po kayo, pero ako nagbabudget po ako. And one of the things I try to do is I try to identify or tintingnan ko po, saan pumupunta yung pera ko? No? Saan yung karamihan ng gastusin ko? Is it for food? Is it for ko ano man? No? And it's a very good indicator of what you value. Siyempre, if, if, you, if, you, if someone spends so much money on food, alam natin, uy, Siguro food dito, mahilig siya sa pagkain na masasarap. If someone spends so much money on new clothes, siguro medyo baka image conscious siya, brand conscious, may pagkaganon. Di ba po? And all these things on, and, and it's fine. We're all spending money. And it's, it's really just a question of where am I spending my money in? And hindi naman natin sinasabi na wag, wag po tayo gumastos, wag pa tayo kumain, wag pa tayo bumili ng pagka, pagkain or bagong damit. Hindi naman po yung mensahe natin. Pero yung, yung, yung tanong lang po is, is the treasures that we have, the money that we spend, is it all submitted to the Lord? Ano po ibig sabihin? Bago po tayo gumagastos, lalo na yung mga malalaking gastusin, no? pinagdadasal po ba natin? And so it's, it's, it's a bit of a confronting heart check because I also have to ask myself that question. No? Now, do I pause and wonder, Lord, where is my money going? And am I spending them the right way? Am I spending them in the way and the things that you want me to spend them on? Might be a hard question. Let's not even answer that right now. We can ask a simpler question. Medyo confrontational, but remember, Pamilya po tayo dito. And, you know, I'm saying this out of love, but really the question is, kapag nag-church po tayo, nagbabayad ba tayo ng tithe? Or if you don't believe in tithe, are we giving our offerings? No? Kasi the tithe, doctrinally, the tithe, it, 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 negative. Diba sabi, the tithe is the Lord. So, kapag nagbayad po tayo ng tithe, madalas feeling natin, uy, okay ako. And everything now. But really, if the Bible says the tithe is the Lord's, all it does is brings us from negative to zero. Kasi sa kanya naman talaga yung binabalik lang natin. But then, yung offering, yan yung positive. Now, we're not teaching on tithing, offering. We're not talking about all those things. So, alam ko medyo controversial siya ngayon. Uh, but my, my main message is whatever you believe about tithing, offering, my main message or really question at this time is 
are we giving to the Lord? Are, is our money and our spending, are our treasures submitted to God? Or sobrang hirap ba? Sobrang sakit ba? Kapag magbibigay tayo sa Panginoon. Now, again, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be sa church. It could be sa missions, sa charity, kung ano man yan. No? But the question is, how tightly are we holding on to the money? to the treasures no because if we're holding on to these tre earthly treasures here on earth baka dapat iba po yung priority natin no now let me let me move forward though it, it it contains to talk about the eye being the lamp of the body being the light um and what what Jesus is saying here is san ka nakatingin san saan nakasalalay ang ang pag-asa mo are we focusing on our money, our jobs, our boss, whatever it is, as our source of security? And that's why it, Jesus continues to say now here that no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. It's going to be a little bit more. That's why you cannot serve both God and money. Tinapos niya yung, yung, yung thought, no? Sinabi niya, it's basically God or money. It's basically God or whatever, actually, blank. God or family, God or career, God or whatever, whatever. God or pleasure, God or me. Yung gusto ko, yung pleasures ko. No, no. You, can ha you have to choose. You cannot serve both. And that's what Jesus is saying here. That's why it's so important that we fix our eyes on the right master. Which is Jesus, hopefully. No? Hopefully, malinaw na yan sa ngayon. So, that's why if we're able to follow the Master, follow Jesus, yung pananaw po natin sa kinabukasan natin, iba na po. Because if all our hope is tied in money, in treasures of the earth, eh hindi naman natin alam anong mangyayari sa kinabukasan, di ba? Like, biglang nag-COVID, biglang nag-recession, biglang kung ano-ano naman nangyari. Tapos yung, yung pag-asa natin na wala bigla. Kasi hindi na natin ma-access yung pera natin kapag may kalamidad, di ba? And that's, and, and, and that's very common here in the Philippines, di ba? Kung may baha, may bagyo, or kung ano mang kalamidad na nangyari, may landslide, tapos biglang nagsara yung mga banko, nagsara yung mga, yung mga bilihan, kung ano man yan. Ano magagawa ng pera natin? Di ba po? And that's, actually, this is really just one example as to why the future scares us so much. A lot of people have this fear of the future because it's a fear of the unknown. Hindi naman natin alam ano mangyayari. And the problem, and or the reason really is with that, is that our, our master is not Jesus. And that's why, from all this, though, haba ng intro ni Jesus, from all this, he continues to say, therefore, dahil sa lahat nito, dahil alam niyo na ngayon na dapat ang master niyo, ang Panginoon mo ay si Jesus at hindi sarili niyo, hindi pera, hindi ano man yan, therefore, we now look at dreams and deadlines. Ito yung sinasabi ko. We look at dreams and deadlines. Previously, we were talking about treasures on earth and on heaven. Now, I want us to talk about dreams and deadlines. Bakit dreams and deadlines? Ang weird naman. Because I want us to understand that what we're going to be talking about now covers both good and bad things. Dreams are something we're hoping for in the future. Deadlines are something we're dreading or, or we're being pressured by in the future na nararamdaman na po natin ngayon no madalas po we 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 live our lives so controlled by the future that the future dictates everything we do now which is good it's good to make plans and everything but the problem is when the plans dictate or drive you and not you dictating and driving the plans yung problema po yun nga na parang lagi na lang natin nararamdaman na uh, we have to chase late tayo or, or, or delayed na tayo sa trabaho, delayed na tayo sa kung ano man yan, na we're always feeling like we're left behind. But you know, uh, actually it's so funny and it's it's what we said, no, that pati ako po, as, as we're talking about these things, uh, I'm also learning and growing. Like even preparing for this message, no, this, this discussion that we're having today, tonight, um, when 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 I was preparing it, 
out pressure the pressure ako na, oy, kailangan ko na to tapusin, kailangan ko na to paghandaan kasi ang dami kailangan gawin na iba, ganun, ganun. So I was pressuring myself until I was reminded that, hey, um, you have enough time. God has time for you. And that's when I, I realized, grabe, I didn't even pray before I prepared. I didn't even pray. And so that's when I, I, I stopped what I was doing. I stopped rushing. I stopped doing all these things. I slowed down and prayed and surrendered to God and trusted in Him and, and, and just let Him take over. And it reminded me of this saying no, from that was said by Martin Luther. Martin Luther was the one who started the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther was quoted by saying, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. I have so much to do. Ang dami kong kailangan gawin that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. That's what Martin Luther said. And it's, it seems so counterintuitive to us today. Na ang dami natin kailangan gawin, but pa tayo mananalangin? But patayo, lalo na tatlong oras yun. That's almost half a work day. Na inisip natin, no, we should rush, we should. What the, mamaya na yung prayer, mama na yung Bible reading, mama na, mamaya na yung church, trabaho muna, pag-aaral muna, ano, ano man yan muna. And I'm sure no, na lahat naman tayo siguro na tatamaan dito. Na, pati ako. Uh, as I as I mentioned, and 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 really, that's what it's about. Then, no? now when when we're pressured by the deadlines and by our dreams, by by the things of life, when we're pressured, ano yung default natin? Yung default po ba natin pumunta muna tayo sa panginoon, or yung default natin huli na ang panginoon? It's a beautiful heart check. Na yung nga, like I said, medyo confronting, but it shows us who is in control of your time, who is in control of your security, of your purpose, of everything. And, you know, it, it's so funny because when I paused and prayed in preparing for our, our discussion, it felt so much easier. In fact, sobrang bilis kong natapos yung, yung, yung notes ko, no? yung pag-aaral ko. It, it was so much faster. Na grabe, ang dami ko pa palang oras. And sometimes that's really how it works. Eh, no? Na when we surrender a time to God, everything seems so easy. Everything seems possible. Everything seems faster. And that's why, di ba, pinag-usapan natin last Tuesday, sino ba yung manager natin ng oras natin? And di ba, that's why na, na, napag-usapan natin ng Psalms 31 verses 14 to 15. We're not gonna go there anymore. But di ba, we, we identify that, oy, for David, for the psalmist, sabi niya, that the Lord holds his time. That the Lord is in charge of everything. That if we put our trust in the Lord to manage our plans, everything will work out the way it should be. That's why, again, it's good to make plans, but are our plans surrendered to the Lord? It's important though that God is, and, and my dad says this all the time here at Red Talks. My dad always says that God has to be our first resort, not our last resort. Hindi po dapat na tinapos na natin yung trabaho, tinapos na natin yung plano, tapos Lord, ito po yung plano ko, bless niya naman. No? no, 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 no. God's not like a good luck charm na mag-sign lang siya, okay, na hindi naman niya alam ano yun. No, we have to involve God in the first place. The Lord, what are your plans for me? Because he has, there was always in Jeremiah, he has plans for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Hindi plans to give us good hope and a future. Eh yung problema, mas gusto natin yung sarili natin plano. Well, that's why we need to submit and surrender and ask God, Lord, what are your plans? What do you want me to do? What's the next step? And if we're able to be driven, not by deadlines, but by God, then we know that that's the best plan for us now. And actually, that's why eh, the reason why we're driven by deadlines that causes us to be overwhelmed. Jan po tayo na pressure. Jan po tayo na ng worries, na ng stress, na ng anxiety. That's when we become overwhelmed. And but that's that's why uh, today in this day and age, it, with everything happening, on bilis bilis na ng lahat ng bagay ng trabaho, ng internet, ng mga kung ano man yan, no? And that's why we get overwhelmed. But that's why in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, Paul reminds us there that we live by faith and not by sight. 
remember, we are not like everyone else in the world. We have a God who we are serving. We have a God who is alive. We have a God who knows the beginning to the end. And therefore, we can live by faith, not by deadlines, not by even our dreams that are good. But no, by faith in the Lord. And that's why, the ba, pinag-usapan po natin last Tuesday, at, at the times where para ang, ang ingay-ingay sa utak natin, ang dami natin pinag-iisipan, ang dami natin problema, we have to take captive our thoughts and make it obedient to Jesus. Now, wait lang, wait lang. What does God say about all this? We need to take charge. You know, I heard in a sermon one time no, that's super helpful. When I heard it, I was like, ako yun na. Uh, in, in the sermon that I was listening to that time, Nagkwenta yung pastor na sabi niya he he was he was driving to church pastor kasi siya no so yan yung trabaho niya so he was driving to church and parang ang bilis niya magmaneho feeling niya he has to drive so fast feeling niya late na siya he has to, bilis bilis pero he said like, wait lang wala naman ako meeting technically maaga pa naman ako bakit ako nagmamadali and that's when he 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 realized that in the times It's a good check for us na kung feeling natin nagmamadali tayo, uy, parang off balance na ako. Parang yung dependence ko nasa akin na hindi nasa Panginoon. Parang wala nang, syempre kung may meeting tapos late tayo, justified no, magmadali kayo kasi late na tayo. But when we're in a rush for absolutely no real reason, it shows us that, hey, our dependence Our security is not on God anymore. It's on our performance. Kaya kailangan magkayat, kailangan bilisan ko, kailangan galing ako. No, no, no. Diyan tayo na si stress. Diyan yung galing ng stress actually. But you know, stress isn't, it's part of, it's it's a curse. It's not part of God's inheritance for us. So whenever we feel stress at work, grabe, Lord, is my dependence still on you? Or ako na dapat maging, maging magaling. Ako na dapat yung mag-perform. Ako na dapat yung, yung, yung mag-lead nito. No, no, no. Our dependence has to be on God. And that's why we, we, we don't see Jesus running around stressed. I mean, remember, when Jesus was here on earth, lahat ng ginawa niya sa buhay niya, yung, yung, at least yung nabasa natin, no? three years lang. The ministry of Jesus was only for three years and he changed the world. But we never saw him running around. We never know. Jesus had enough time to eat. That's very good for us. So, kumain kayo. Wag, wag po <laughs> Don't skip meals. Jesus had enough time to eat. Jesus had enough time to slow down and talk to the people and heal people and pray people. Even though wala sa agenda kasi biglang sumulput na lang sa kalsada. And then like, Jesus, I need you. He had time for everyone. He had time to slow down. Mas, mas busy ba tayo? Mas importante ba tayo kaysa kay Jesus? Siyempre, hindi naman, di ba? So, <laughs> It's really a good heart check for us to, Lord, I know that there's enough time. So I will slow down. Hindi naman siya presa, wag na tayo magtrabaho. But we, we need to just slow down at the pace of Jesus to make sure that we're, we're, we're in dependence on Him, that we are at rest, really, with Him and in Him. No. So don't let your dreams and deadlines, good things and bad things in the future, dictate your present. Realize there is a purpose to every season. Kaya po, di ba, sa, I think unang episode, pina, binasa po natin yung sa Ecclesiastes. Now, there is a time for everything. A time to kill, a time to destroy, a time to be happy and be sad. Lahat binasa natin. But really, that's that's really the point. There is a time to everything. Pero if I can add, no, there is a purpose to every season. There's a reason why you are where you are today. So whenever for 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 me, for example, now there's there's a practice I try to do for myself. Now, whenever I'm going to be starting something new, whether it's a new job, whether I'm going to a new country, and naman yet, when I'm starting something new, I always ask, Lord, what is your purpose for me here? Why am I part of this company? What 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 do you want me to do? Is there someone you want me to minister to? Is there someone you want me to pray for? Is there someone you want me to walk with or disciple? No. Why am I where I am? Why am I in the Philippines? Why am I? Diba? Yan, yung pag, yan yung pag-iisip ko whenever I'm starting something new. Because we have to remember and realize there's a purpose to every season. And we have to never, don't sell 
the present that we have for the future. Di ba po sabi natin last episode that the best time of your life is today. Not yesterday. And today I will add, not tomorrow. The best time of your life is today. Because today is when God is revealing new things to you. Today is when we're going to experience, we're going to taste and see the glory and the goodness of our Lord. Today is the day. This is the day, diba? Sabi sa Bible, this ends sa kanta. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's why we can be happy. Because it's the best day of our lives. So for people who want to grow in joy, want to grow in happiness, want to grow in gratitude, this is how you do it. By recognizing, Lord, this is the best day of my life. You have so much plans for me. You have surprises for me. You're going to do great things in my life today. And that's why we can rejoice and be glad. Not because we're promoted. Not because we're in a good company. We're in a good country. No, not because we're traveling. No, we can rejoice and be glad because God, who is in control of our lives, is good. And he has great things up ahead. So don't sell your present for your future. Don't be too excited na, di ba yung nung bata tayo, na, oh, oh, excited na ako maging adult para may pera na ako, para may kotse na ako, para ganang ganang, may freedom na ako, para gawin ko ano man yun. Don't, don't, di ba lagi, lagi, sa, lagi natin sinasabi na the grass is greener on the other side, pero hindi naman. Di ba? Now, when, when we're at our present company, na stress is stress, ah, inisip natin, oh, siguro kung lumipat ako sa ibang kumpanya, mas masaya ako. Not necessarily. Where you are, as long as syempre, you pray about where you where God wants you to go, is God calling you to your current company, to your current church, to wherever you are right now? Is God calling you to, this, to migrate to this country, that country? Ano man yan. As long as we're where God wants us to be, that's the best place for us. What happens when we're not where God wants us to be? Basahin niyo lang yung Jonah. <laughs> uh, nagkaroon na siya ng so ng daming problema. But when, we're, we're, but when we are where God wants us to be, there might be problems, there might be storms in life, but there's that joy. There's that peace. There's that certainty. Hindi po tayo nagmamadali sa wala namang problema. Diba po? So, and, and, and I, I, I see myself encountering the same thing now with with my nieces and my nephews, and grabe, I'm trying my best. I'm trying so hard to be present with them. Kasi when, when I blink and I look at them, I get, grabe, ang laki na nila. Ang tanda na nila. Stop growing. Yan yung sinasabi ko, tigilan niyo yun. Gusto ko pa rin mag-enjoy yung, yung pagiging bata niyo. Yung, yung pagiging baby nyo. Ang saya kasi, pag may baby, pag may bata, lagi silang nagahalakakan, lagi silang naglalaro. Ang, ang ganda ng, ang, ang ganda. The problem is we're selling our present for the future. It's easy to see it in other people, in the babies, in the kids. It's easy to see it in people, in good companies, in good situations in life. But when we look at ourselves, we forget. When we look at ourselves, we're like, hindi naman ako nag enjoy I'm not grateful for where I am. And that's why we need to slow down. Enjoy the, the, the gifts that God has put in your life, in your day to day. No? It's like we're driving past our life. Diba nasa highway tayo, nasa skyway tayo, nagmamaneho tayo. Ang bilis. Hindi po natin nakakita yung mga tindahan dyan, yung mga coffee shop dyan. But one of the things I love is when I'm walking and nadidiscover ko, oy. Bago coffee shop dito, try na nga natin. Bago yan ah. Uy, may, may store pala dito ng kung ano man yan, ng libro, ng laruan, ng whatever, ng paintings. Uy, ganda ting- Tara, pasok tayo, tingin tayo. And that's, I, I think that's what makes traveling so magical for us. Because everything is new. We're able to walk and explore and enjoy these new hidden things. But you know, you can do that where you are. You can do that with your life. You can slow down. Diba sabi dila, uh, ano sabi dila, stop and smell the roses. Eh, well, you can do that. Slow down, no? Slow down. And we need to control what we take in. Diba? We're, 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 we're always on our phones. We're always on social media. Ang daming problema ng mundo. That's why lagi tayo napapressure. Lagi po tayo nasistress. And that's why from dreams and deadlines, what I want to talk about now is anxiety and worry. Last episode, yun sa Tuesday, no? we, we were talking about looking at the past. 
And the focus of that was if we're stuck in the past, that's actually the reason why we become depressed. Because we're stuck in past traumas, we're stuck in past problems, in the glory days of old, na wala na tayong pag-asa para sa present, tsaka para sa kinabukasan. That's a source of depression, the past. Yo, uh, Siyempre, hindi, okay lang sa mga tao na sentimental parang ako. Huwag lang tayo ma-stuck sa past. No? So that's a source of depression. But the source of anxiety and worry is actually the future. Yung mga hindi pa nangyayari. Diyan po tayo natatakot, diyan po tayo sa stress, nag-aalala. Anxiety and worry. But you know, there was a study done in 1999 by three researchers no, from the United States. And they identified that actually 85% of the things na we're worrying about, we're stressing about, hindi naman nangyayari. 85%. That's a big number. So what's happening is that we are spending all our time today worrying about mo- most of the things that will never happen. Kaya iyan yung problema eh. Kaya dyan po tayo nalulunod sa takot, nalulunod sa pag-aalala, nalulunod sa, sa, sa worries natin, sa anxiety natin. And it's so bad that today people have to use medication, medicine to help them not think about all these things. And, and I have nothing against those tools that we use, no? But we shouldn't be in a constant state of worry in the first place. And that's why that's why I think to, today our discussion is so important because alam ko naman marami sa atin, we experience this, even me. We worry about the future. We're afraid of the future. But 85% of those, can you comment that down below? 85%. Para lang, para lang mag-sink in sa utak natin, gano'ng kalaki nun? Ibig po sabihin, only 15% percent not 20 ah 15% of the things we think about we worry about we stress about nangyayari ang liit nun. ang liit nun. um that's why you know in, in let's let's jump back to the bible in proverbs 27 verse 1 proverbs 27 verse 1 please write this down this is very important proverbs 27 verse 1 sabi dito do not boast about tomorrow. For you don't know what a day may bring forth. Ibig po sabihin, hindi mo alam man yung bukas. So, it says, don't boast. Wag po tayo magpa... Ano yan? Ma- ma- mauubusan ako ng Tagalog. Don't boast. Don't get prideful na, uy, alam mo, ito yung plano ko bukas. Ito yung uh, accomplishment ko bukas. Ito yung ganaganan ko bukas. Hindi mo naman alam anong mangyayari. So, don't boast. But in the same way, don't worry about tomorrow. Diba po, actually, yan yung verse natin sa Matthew, diba? Do not worry about tomorrow. Kasi, again, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And apparently, 85% of the things we think will happen will not happen. So, don't worry about tomorrow. In fact, in business, boasting about tomorrow, what should we do? In Proverbs, so same book, no? Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 verses 9 verse 9 lang ata. Proverbs 16 verse 9 sabi po dito, in his heart sa puso po natin, a man plans his course, yung buong daan, yung buong plano tapos na sa puso natin. But the Lord determines his steps. The Lord determines his steps. Can you comment below step by step? Lagi ko sa dosabi comment below, baka nasa side pala. Comment wherever, step by step. We are called to walk with the Lord. Right? That's that's what we say. Now, we, we, we want to walk with the Lord. To walk with the Lord means a step at a time. And when we're following the Master, right? Just a throwback to yung Master na pinag-usapan natin kanina. When we're following the Master, hindi po natin alam saan yung daan. Ang alam lang natin, dito siya tumapak, dito ako tatapak. Ito yung direction niya ngayon, ito rin yung direction ko. And we're looking closely to the master, right? That's, that's, that's what it's all about. We're going step by step with the Lord. So notice, di ba sabi, sabi sa Proverbs, a man in his heart, sa, sa sarili lang natin, ibig po sabihin, hindi natin sinashare sa Panginoon. In his heart, a man plans his course, buong daan, buong buhay natin, planado na, tapos na. Pero plano lang yan. 
But the Lord determines His steps. The Lord knows bawat hakbang natin kung anong mangyayari, kung anong gagawin natin. And yan yung sure, kasi the Lord determines. So, that's really, I think it's a better lifestyle for us to live because mas may kapayapaan eh. Mas may surrender sa anumang plano ng Panginoon sa atin. And notice, we have actually lost the ability and the art of silence. Ulit, ulit po yun. We have actually lost the ability and the art of silence. Now, I, I noticed now, when I'm driving, kapag walang music or walang, walang nagsasalita, walang podcast, walang ano, medyo weird yung feeling. Medyo feel ko may kulang. Medyo ayoko maging mag-isa kasama ng mga pinag-iisipan ko. Yung mga nasa utak ko. Kasi ang gulo, ang, ang ingay sa utak ko eh. And that's why we play music. That's why we listen to podcasts. So everything just to distract us from being present. But if we don't deal with our thoughts, if we don't choose to be present and, uh, and, and process everything, we will never be able to be present. We will never be at peace. We will never be able to enjoy the silence. Another example is when I'm eating, no? When I'm eating, I I I I catch myself. Now, huli ko yung sarili ko na kapag kumakain, ang bilis ko kumakain. And when I catch myself eating so fast, I feel like oh, tara tara kain na para pwede na magtrabaho, para pwede na ano kung ano man yan. When I catch myself eating <laughs> so fast, I stop and I slow down and I and I try to be present and focus on the food that I'm eating. What am I eating? Ano yung lasa? Masarap ba? Sino yung kasama ko? That's what I'm doing. And enjoying really the food. So, notice, di ba? Pinag-usapan natin last, um, kailan yun? Pinag-usapan natin last Tuesday na the Lord gives us, Ecclesiastes, the Lord gives us the ability to make wealth but also to enjoy the wealth. So, it's 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 one thing na magtrabaho tayo, magkain tayo para magkaroon ng pera it's another to enjoy it. Na minsan, hindi naman lagi, no? Minsan, gamitin naman natin, maglaman naman tayo, mag, eh, again, in the right context, no? Um, but God wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So in the same way, if 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 we're always in a rush, we will never be able to enjoy it. So I realize we can only enjoy when we are present. Otherwise, we'll be distracted will be in a rush. We'll never really fully enjoy it and understand it. No? And that's why let's slow down. Let's learn to be silent. And, and, and let's learn to deal with our anxieties and our worries by recognizing, again, that 85% of the things that we're worrying about will not matter. That's why we that's why our, our, our topic for tonight is rooted and grounded because we want to be rooted and grounded, unshakable. Yan, yan po yung ibig sabihin, rooted and grounded. Yung grounding po na sinasabi, it's it's also a term used na kailangan mag-ground ng mga bahay. Kasi minsan kapag may lightning na bigla-biglang tatamaan niya yung bahay, kapag walang grounding yun, makakuryente po mga tao, masisira po yung mga appliance kasi mag overcharge but if there's a grounding, what it does is that the lightning goes to the to the lightning rod, which grounds the house. The lightning goes to the grounding rod and goes straight to the earth. What that means for us, let me let me explain no. Kasi syempre, hindi naman tayo scientists karamihan. Uh, but what that means to us is in Psalms 112, 112. Psalms 112 verses 6 to 8, and I'll, I'll try to speed up. Psalms 112, 6 to 8, it says here, Surely he will never be shaken. Wow, nice. A righteous man will be remembered forever. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is secure, verse 8. He will have no fear. In the end, comment that down below, in the end. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. So, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Uh, we'll, we'll stay at Psalms 112 for a bit now. But what it's saying is that, you know, when when, when I read this, I, I, I can't help but feel like I want to be this man. 
a man who is unshakable, a man who is not afraid of bad news, a man who is steadfast, firm, trusting in the Lord, who is secure, he will have no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. So whatever it looks like now, in the end, panala po siya. Yan yung gusto ko. But how do we achieve this? It's actually, the secret of this verse is in verse 1. Sabi dito, Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. We can achieve this by trusting in the Lord, walking in his ways, having surrendering to him as our master. Imagine, he will have no fear of bad news. Ako po, bilang tao, hindi po ako mahilig sa mga surprises. Sa mga surprises. Ay, ayoko yun. Kasi everything gets ruined. Na, uy, whether good or bad, na, uy, eh, itong plano kong gawin. Okay naman to, pero ito yung plano ko eh. Hindi po ako mahilig dyan. Lalo na yung siyempre bad news. And notice, diba sabi dito, he will have no fear of bad news. Alam natin bad news. Pero hindi po siya na shape. Hindi po siya na, ano yung tamang term? <laughs> Hindi po siya na takot or, or yun nga, na shake or whatever. He will have no fear of bad news. And that's one thing I like, no? Kasi, yun nga, bad news obviously shakes people. Bad news obviously, it's like, wow, hindi ko yun in-expect. Sobrang nasira lahat ng plano. Ano nang gagawin ko ngayon? Hindi ko na alam. The bar, or what the common saying is in English, it's like the carpet was pulled under our feet. Ibig po sabihin, everything turned upside down. The world turned upside down. Good, nagkagulo-gulo na. But notice, if we are grounded and rooted, we will not be shaken. Lightning, that ground, that kailangan ng lightning. Lightning, ah, kailangan ng grounding. Because lightning happens in life. Lightning represents unexpected things that strike us suddenly. And we, we don't know when it's coming. That's why we need to be grounded all the time. We need to be rooted all the time. That's why in 1 Peter, and we're about to close, in 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter, banda dulo po siya, 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, wait lang ha, ayan, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 7, 1 Peter 5, 6-7, sabi po dito, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. That's nice. Beautiful. Verse 7, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Wow. We can cast our cares, our worries, our anxieties to God because we know He cares for us. Beautiful. But notice, why is it connected to verse 6? Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. It's connected because we realize now, oh, the reason why we don't surrender our worries and anxieties and our cares to him, medyo kay pagkamayabang pala tayo. Kasi minsan, I, I'm, not, I'm not meaning to accuse people, but even for me, no? Ito pala yung pananaw natin when we don't cast our cares to God. Ito yung pananaw natin. Lord, hindi mo to kaya. Ako kaya ko. Ako bahala dito. Hindi ko, alam, hindi ko pa alam anong gagawin ko, pero ako na bahala. Kaya po tayo nag-aalala. Kaya po hindi natin nasusurrender sa kanya. Kasi feeling natin, either hindi niya kaya or kaya natin. Or both. Diba? That's why surrendering, whatever it is in life, but in our topic today, surrendering our worries, our cares about tomorrow, about the unknown, it requires humility. It's not, it's not anymore about you. Eh. <laughs> it's out of our hands. Wala na po tayong control. And that's so scary for a lot of people. Even for me sometimes. That I, I can't control this anymore. I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do. Kaya, jet, see? Diyan po tayo nagkakaroon ng stress. Nagkakaroon po ng anxiety. Next, and what we call spiral. We are spiraling down our own thoughts. And that's why the only way to stop the spiral is to surrender it to God, is to offer it to God because He cares for you. And that's a beautiful thing, which we'll get to in a few seconds. <laughs> but I, I want to say, no, that if we're so focused on the future, it has the ability to blind us of today. If we're so focused on what's ahead, we forgot to see... What do I have now? And that's why 
that's actually why we get so scared of tomorrow because we don't recognize God has given me so much tapada today. Actually, God has given me what I need for tomorrow. All I have to do is trust Him and be at peace. You know, anxiety and worry can be combated by this next two things, which is the last thing we're going to be talking about. It can be combated by His kingdom and His righteousness, which is where we're going to be closing. No? It, it, it's back in where we read some Matthew 6. But can you comment that down below, Muna? Uh, his kingdom and his righteousness. Sabi po dito, di ba? You said, do not worry. I think we have time to read the Bible. Therefore, I tell you, verse 25, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is that life more important than food and body more important than clothes? That's actually a beautiful point, no? There's more to life than your job. There's more to life than food. There's more to life than clothes. There's more to life, more for us to enjoy. Because I hear so many people telling me now, they're, they're not happy with life anymore. What's the purpose? And it makes me so sad. Because <laughs> life is beautiful. Life is fun. Life is amazing. God has given us a beautiful life. But because we don't recognize it today, we're not enjoying it. That's why people get anxiety, people get depression, people start to worry because they don't recognize the beauty of life today. We're not saying, no, ignore the worries, ignore the problems, ignore all these things. Problems are real. But we can recognize problems, but also enjoy life at the same time. In fact, if I, if I, if I can take it a step further, if we don't enjoy life, we will never be able to conquer and, and, and overcome the problems. Because we na, na burn out. Po tayo, no? But moving on. Hindi, wala po yan sa notes ko. Moving on. 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bars. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Your heavenly father, not theirs. Your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Siyempre, wala. Diba? Wala namang silbi. Pag-aalala. Verse 28, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Ibi po sabihin, we, we, we chase after money, yes, but we're not really after money. We're after the things that money can buy us, which is food, which is clothes, which is shelter, house, everything, right? So let, let's, let's understand, Jesus is going to the heart of it here. He spoke about money first, but he's saying, you know, it's not even about money. Ano ba yung silbi ng pera? Para may masarap na pagkain, para may mag magandang damit, para may bahay, para maka-travel, all these things. But what he's saying here is that God has food to feed the birds. God has clothes for the flowers. He already has it all. You don't have to worry. That's enough. <laughs> Verse 30, if this, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, wala na naman to bukas, pero dinadamitan pa rin na maganda, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Little faith kasi di tayo naniniwala. Kaya, di ba sabi natin, to submit and surrender requires humility. Verse 31, and here's where we're gonna close and, and focus on them. It says here, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans or people who don't believe in God, or at least who don't believe in our God, for the pagans run after all these things. Everyone's worried about the same thing. Everyone's undergoing the same types of pressures and problems and stresses in life. Lahat po tayo, tao lang. Lahat po tayo. Wala naman siguro alien na nakikinig sa akin. Atin ngayon, no? Lahat po tayo, parehas yung problema natin. Siyempre, iba-iba yung gano'ng kalaki. Di ba po? But it's still the same problem. The rich, even though they have money, they still want more money. <laughs> yung ganun po. That's why, di ba, I said sa simula. Kasi I, I, don't want, I don't want any of us to think, no, na wala namang problema yung mga mayaman, na or wala namang problema yung mga ibang tao. Everyone has problems. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about that. Everyone has problems. 
That's why for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Alam na niya na kailangan natin to. 33. But kahit na alam na niya, ito pa rin focus natin. Kahit na ito yung mga problema, ito pa rin yung focus natin. Can you, if you have your Bibles, can you circle that? Or if you don't have your Bibles, I hope you do. Please comment that down below. But, but, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. If there's a first, there's second, third, fourth, fifth. All we have to do is get the first thing right. Everything else will follow in life. All we need is seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. There, verse 34. Therefore, oh, diba sabi ko may therefore, what was there before? Because we're seeking Jesus, his kingdom, his righteousness first, Therefore, dahil dyan, dahil alam na natin to, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Every day has enough trouble of its own. I never, before, long ago, I didn't know verse 33 and 34 were connected. Kal- alam ko yung mga verses, pero kal- ko separate sila, hindi sila connected. But my mind was, wow, connected pala sila. In fact, it's it's literally one section. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, dahil jan, dahil binigay na, dahil nandyan ng Panginoon sa paligid nyo, at kapag sinundan natin, bibigyan na nila lahat ng kailangan natin sa buhay. Dahil jan, hindi na natin kailangan mag-alala, lala na tungkol sa kinabukasan. That's what it's all about. So, number one, your heavenly father, Your heavenly father. Personal. Your heavenly. He has the ability, the resources, the power to provide all you need. Father. Ibig po sabihin dito, mahal ka niya. Hindi ka niya pababayaan. He will always protect you, guard you, care about you, think of you. Your heavenly father. Can you comment that down below? Your heavenly father. That, that, that encapsulates the reason why we don't have to worry. Because we're not trusting in some random kung sino ba niya, stranger or whoever. We're trusting in your heavenly father. That's why you could put your trust in him. That's why you don't have to be afraid. You know, in the message version, sabi, sabi dito of the same verse we read, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Si Lord na bahala sa'yo. Kapag dumating yung problema, si Lord na bahala sa'yo. Kapag dumating yung mga bagong bills, si Lord na bahala sa'yo. Kung ano man yan, si Lord na bahala sa'yo. That's what it's all about because He is your Heavenly Father. He knows what you need so we can have relationship and peace with Him. Seek first, di ba? God first. God first before anything. The last thing I want to talk about is anong ibig sabihin ng seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. His kingdom and His righteousness. I, I, I want us to, I know we're over time, but I want us to talk about this because kung hindi naman natin naintindihan yung verse, anong silbi? So, let's talk about this. Though. What is His kingdom and what is His righteousness? His kingdom is talking about His people. His country, what God is doing. God is building His kingdom as we speak. Kaya nga, di ba, sa dulo ng Matthew 28, yung Great Commission. Now go therefore and baptize all the nations in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. From Go to the ends of the earth as my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. We have a mission, an opportunity to partner with God. I realized when we're not doing anything, sobrang focus natin sa problema natin. Kasi hindi po tayo distracted. Sorry. Mali. We're so focused on these things because we're, we're, we're idle. We're not busy with the work of God. We're, so, we're hyper aware, extra sensitive po tayo. Kasi bored tayo eh. Kung yung tao bored, kung ano-ano man yan yung, yung gagawin niya, yung kakalikutin niya. It's like... um. 
I'm not gonna say specifically who. Pero um, minsan sa bahay, no, kapag bored yung isang tao, parang umiikot siya, naghahanap siya ng problema, naghahanap siya ng mga gamit na pwede niyang ipagreklamuhan, ipagreklamo. Kasi bored siya. But when, because when people are without a purpose, they're drifting through life. And so, they're, they're, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense. But it requires us to be purpose-driven. That, that we're too busy with the work of God to notice all these things that don't really matter. Because they don't matter. Because God will take care of it. God will take care of the food, the clothes, everything. All we have to do is be involved in the work God is doing. Is be involved with His people, with loving people, sharing to people, talking to His people. There's this short story lang. Then we'll move on to righteousness. There's the story of this um this 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 mother, you know, this mother of this great minister. Or, and and her, her husband was also a minister and she was a minister herself. But she was old already, I, I don't know how old, but like senior senior citizen level lang pas pa. And na, nagkasakit po siya. Nagka-cancer po siya. It is turbidal. And she, and she did know what to do. She was praying to God and believing God to heal her. Nasa hospital po siya, dyan po siya nakastay. Because they needed to monitor her and make sure kapag nagkaroon ng problema, they can respond immediately. And as she was spending time with the Lord in prayer in her in her hospital bed, God was telling her, and she, she was asking, Lord, please heal me. And God told her, why don't you go around the hospital and start praying for the other people? And you think, I don't know. <laughs> Siya na nga mismo, nangangailangan ng power ni Lord, ng healing. And yet God told her to start praying for other people. And because that's what God said, she started doing it. So she went to the different wards, started praying for the different people, and people would get healed, and she would just move on, pray for other people. After some time passed, before she knew it, she had one of the regular tests on herself done. Bigla na gulo yung doctor, uy, yung sakit mo na wala na. Pinagaling na siya ng Panginoon. Because she, she was so busy, she didn't even notice. But she was so busy, she didn't have time to complain either. She was so focused on what God has called her to do. Si Lord na bahala sa sa kanya. And that's really what it's all about. So that is what happens when we seek first the kingdom of God. Okay? The last thing is His righteousness. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. What is the righteousness of God? Let me phrase it this way. I think it's better to answer the question. Who is the righteousness of God? It's Jesus. That's why in Jesus, when we are found in Jesus Christ, only then are we clothed with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. So in the same way, if we're clothed in the righteousness of God, if we if God tells us to seek his righteousness, it just means spend your time looking for Jesus, looking at Jesus, loving on Jesus, growing and walking with Jesus. That's really what it means. So tomorrow will worry about itself. Ibig po sabihin nito, kahit na dumating na ang kinabukasan, hindi mo, pa rin, hindi mo pa rin trabaho na mag-alala. It will worry about itself. Not you, not even God will worry about it. Tomorrow will worry about itself. So don't worry about that. Now, the past two episodes, we've been giving activities for us to apply. I hope you've been doing it. I pray you've been doing it. But for today, for today's episode, one thing we could do is write the deadlines and dreams. Write your deadlines and dreams. That is filling up your mind and worrying you and stressing you out. Write your deadlines and dreams. And then once you've done that, at the side, write God's promises about those. So for example, your dream is, Lord, my dream is to have children. Na magkaanak kami ng asawa ko. For example, that's your dream. Right beside it, the, the reference, the verse that says that children are a gift from God. If you're if you're worrying about your deadlines at work, na Lord, ito, ito yung problema ko sa work, may, may, may report na kailangan isubmit. 
magsulit ka. Magsulit kayo sa tabi niya kung ano mamahanap niyo. Like for example, the Lord will bless all the works of your hands. All these promises of God. I, what I'm trying to do is shift our focus. Like last episode, we were shifting our focus, di ba? From the past to the present. Ngayon, ganun din. We're shifting our focus from the present to from the future to the present. From the deadline, from the dreams, to the promise of God. Because only in the promise of God do we have footing to stand on without fear of being shaken. So, I pray though that our, our, our discussion tonight is able to help root us and ground us. And for those of you tonight now that you might be thinking, it doesn't matter kasi laging kulang talaga yung oras. You know, I, I, I feel like God is telling you, and we're not going to go there anymore, but you can write it down. It's in Joel 2, 25 to 26. It says there that God will, will restore to you the years that were taken away. And if you feel like you lost all time, that's why you feel the need to catch up, to run. Uh, you have, you're, you're, you're riddled and, and, and trapped by anxiety and worries about tomorrow. God will restore to you the time. God will restore to you the years. If you walk with the Lord, magagulat na lang kayo na, Oy, paano ito naging posible? Kala ko it will take me five years, naging two years. God is a God of restoration. God is a God of time. All you have to do is trust in Him and walk in Him. So together, let's be grounded. Let's be rooted in the present as God builds us and trains us up for His plans and His purposes. So that is all. Sister Barry. Praise God, Joas. Because uh, this particular verse no, is very popular. Uh, yung Matthew 6 na pinag-aralan natin. But still, we get, yun naman ang katotohanan eh. Lagi talaga tayo nagwo-worry. So it, it, this is the time that we, the Holy Spirit is dealing with us right now to just support the moment. And uh, praise God, yung first assignment natin is... Uh, Nung uh, episode one is to uh, write our uh, thankfulness, gratefulness. And just last uh, Tuesday, my assignment ulit si Josh. And today, you know, write your deadlines and dreams and write the promises of God. No? Um, mga kapatid, uh, this is the time that... Uh, we get to enjoy the presence of God when we write this one. Do it right now. If after the, the live session. And even better if you can uh, write it together with your husband or with your children or with your best friend. Enjoy the presence of God while you're writing it. This is something that I will do. And uh, guys, talaga pong you... you try to uh, replay yung episode 1 and 2 kasi connected po itong episode 3 natin. From yesterday, today, and tomorrow, episode 1, episode 2 is throwback glory. And tonight, rooted and grounded. What a better way to uh, enjoy the rest of the day by re-reading re Matthew 6, mga kapatid, and praise God uh, he is present. The Holy Spirit is there to teach us, to teach and deal with us individually. So let us ask just to have the final prayer for everyone. And uh, guys, <clears throat> let's do it as once again, vertically, as, he, as this young man lead us in prayer. Let it be personal. So Josh? Okay, let us all pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would speak to each and every one of us and highlight and show us, Lord God, things in our life that are not surrendered to you. Show us, Lord God, things about our future that we are holding on tightly that we should let go and offer to you. 
Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would deliver each and every one of us from anxiety and worry, that we would just have hope, biblical hope, that we would have an expectation that everything up ahead is good because you are our good heavenly Father. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would deliver us from, from, from all these things that weigh us down. Especially, and remind us, Lord God, that you are in control of the future, that you are the God who knows the beginning to the end, that you are the Alpha and Omega, and we can put our trust in you, that whatever happens, we don't know what's going to happen, but you will be the one in control, that all we need to do is take it one step at a time, one day at a time, so that we can enjoy the present, so that we can enjoy the blessings, so that we can enjoy you. So, Father, I pray that you would transform us, and through this, that we would grow in peace and in joy as we wait on you, Lord, and as we fix our eyes on you and you alone. Thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. This is Thursday's Red Talks Kwentuhan ng Pag-ibig ng ating Panginoon. I hope by now in the last three years that you are so close to our Lord Jesus Christ. No, uh, Thank you, Josh, all the time. And we still have many episodes. We're looking forward and we praise God uh, for your life. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Mahal po namin kayo. See you po Good on night. Thursday. See you Good po. night, everyone. Good night po. And uh, God bless you.